Uh, we've got uh, two hours to uh, get through our uh, 31 or four or five uh, Fisher poets who signed up to give us one more go. So we can do it, but we've been practicing this for 21 years. <laughs> and and uh, this year, I think there is a groundswell of, of enthusiasm among uh, all of us that uh, the time limit will be uh, uh, enforced. <laughs> and I feel really silly. I'm not, nothing, nothing about this event is more nerve-wracking to me than trying to get somebody off the stage who's taking somebody else's time. And the kind of guy I am is just why I let him go to figure it out. You know, he's probably. Yeah. Anyway, now I'm doing it myself, goddammit. So, uh, you're entitled to three minutes. And if I'm going to start to clap at three minutes, and when I start to clap, every one of you guys has to start to clap. Because I'm going to feel really silly if I'm already clapping by myself. Thank you very much. Now, I just burned my three minutes, I have to be done. It doesn't matter what poem I brought up to you because I just burned three minutes telling you what we're going to do. So the introduction to your three minutes is part of what you did. And, and I just want to say one more thing, that the slam was a great idea because it was starting to train us to, to stay with it. And I just want to thank everybody because everywhere I went this uh, time, people were really respectful of other people's time. And of course, that's what it's about. You're, you're, you're cheating somebody else of their time, especially the folks near the end, if you're taking too much time. And I know that Fishing Game never pulled up next to me and said, could you get that net out of the water as fast as you can, please? Because, you know, you're about a minute and a half over right now. And if you don't get over pretty, that out pretty soon, we're going to have to issue a ticket. Uh, that never happened for me. Okay, so first up today is uh, Lori Haight. Gino Leach is on deck, and uh, Peter Monroe is in the hole. everybody for coming this year. Um, a lot of you knew my husband Smitty, Harrison Smitty Smith was one of the famous first here. Was, uh, well he died six years ago and I don't want to let his memory die so I'm going to read one of his signature poems to you and it's called The Ballad of Rubber Hooks Divine. I was thinking that Rick was going to do it but he didn't. Okay, The Ballad of Rubber Hooks Divine. And this was, this was written by Smitty exactly 19 years ago today. Exactly 19 years ago today. Uh, according to a fisherman whose name was Divine, the world's a cafeteria. You get one trip through the line. With this fact then planted firmly in his mind, he set his sights on having the best that he could find. He was always dreaming of a life of luxury. The way that things were going was likely not to be, because in order to accomplish these somewhat lofty goals, he sorely needed every fish that bent his trolling poles. So long and loud, he would complain when a fish slipped off his line. Consequently, he was known as Rubber Hook's Divine. <laughs> By unjust fate or foul luck, lost fish, his dreams were thwarted, resulting in domestic when he'd rather have imported. Resigned to screw top bottles, no cork stoppered stuff. Be damn those fish that got away making his life tough. He had a box of crackers, but no beluga caviar. And a beat up old Chevy, but no fancy German car. Quality of life in intricate design, those were serious matters for Rubber Hook's divine. He had a lot of friends among the other trollers, but of course included were no mega bucks high rollers. So when a cruise ship bound for Sitka happened by to pass, he seized this opportunity to view the upper class. Rubber hooks maneuvered as close as he dared to sail. A real nice looking lady was waving from the rail. A diamond necklace round her throat had slipped its fragile clasp. Tragically, it fell away despite her frantic grasp. Diamonds sparkled in the sun as they plunged into the brine and by chance became entangled on his port side bow line. Now Rubber Hooks was trolling a diamond-studded lure that no salmon could resist, and that was for sure because there was an instant stretching of a spring. The diamond lure was inhaled by a 35-pound king. 
rubber hooks crossed his fingers and put the girdy in gear that this fish might depart was his greatest fear. Oh yes, he got the fish with those diamonds on the hook. He clutched onto the necklace and off for Sitka town he took. Well, on the way he was overcome by the strangest feeling. If he kept and sold his necklace, in fact, he would be stealing. So he approached the cruise ship office and he left this note. I found a diamond necklace and I've got it on my boat. I want to return it because it isn't mine. I'm tied up to the fishing float. Signed, Rubber Hooks Divine. While he was cooking supper from the cabin door and knocking, Rubber Hooks looked out at what he saw was shocking. Seeing good looking lady that was on the cruise ship deck, she sure looked good to Rubber Hooks despite no diamonds around her neck. Come in, I've got your necklace and a seat please take. I'm just fixing supper here, have some salmon steak. So they became acquainted as they began to dine on salmon steak and fried potatoes washed down with screw top bottle wine. <laughs> the lady was impressed and she began to feel that she'd never met a better man nor had a better meal. She said, I'm really jealous of the life you lead, so what I'm really hoping is a partner you might need. The deal was promptly made that fulfilled both their wishes, rubber hooks whistled, tying gear, and she sang while washing dishes. So from then on, they fished together, and although his nickname stuck, never more was Rubber Hooks heard to curse his luck. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Uh, this goes back to 1978. It's called Let's Go Take a Look. Go on fishing. I dressed in bedroom blackness by a cast iron, warm, warm heat. And Ruth decided to meet Axe Bait and crap her in the deep. I found her cheekbone on a pillow, blindly brushed a kiss, and left her to a moonstone dream, sleep fragrance on my lips. Well, in this sodden black blanket night, hung, woodshed, fur pitch musk. I ragged a hole in a fogged up windshield limped off in a crippled truck. Rain drilled the road with welding rod drops. Porch lit houses drowned in their sleep. Beer cans laid drunk in a fog line. I turned left at Portway Street. The fleet slept restless in the basin. Wind racked rigging and surging boats. Rain rolled out the scuppers and ran down rough street holes. Shoulders hunched, I slipped and slid on a moss back fur plank floats and honed in on a running light to cast a hell red glow. She was a square stern crabber, amber, her engine idled in the heartless night. She belonged to a kid with a dream and a brand new sodium light. He was a gill netter son from Clifton, scratching an ocean itch with a 40-foot boat and 400 pots, Nikki Rasinovich. Well, I laid hands on Amber's groove cap rail, swung myself aboard. She stank of bait and fuel, I shoehorned in the cabin door. Well, Nikki and Paul were deadpan with the backs to galley stove. The radio painted an ominous picture of a jack booted offshore low. Well, old Nicky set his jaw. We read him like a book. He loaded up a snooze and said, let's go take a look. Thank you. And hey, my name is Peter Monroe. I'm really glad to be here. If any of you get a chance, you should check out Gino's Broke Boots afterwards. I'm going to have to get some. I have heard the slamming of hatches. I have witnessed the real man's grunt and heave. I have stood by while my deck boss catches our chief in his arms, too drunk to leave the elbow room on his own. I have staggered under the weight of a young deck ape who'd mourned his marriage with vodka, then tried to nail an obese and weathered whore, her scorn for his failure crowning him like Jesus. I've seen stormlight burn black as a Bible, and illuminating darkness its locust the eye of a lone sailor unable to look away. 
I've listened while screamer captains ream their boys on deck. I have lifted my eyes to the wheelhouse high among fulmers while a skipper on a loud hailer rift hard and long on themes conceived in anger. Purified by wind, essayed by fatigue, a fierce language has pierced my ears, drawn thin syllables of labor and hurry, of danger and fear, of rage and despair, in God's worst place in creation to be alone, where sailors groan in their sleep, piled up like puppies while we steam down to the next string of pots, their slickers cinched tight to their chins, hoods up, rain pants taped tight about their boots, slumber come quicker than God's wrath or gales or a captain's rant tossed in exhaustion's odd dreams. I have been lulled by the slamming of mild steel. I have learned fear as the barometer plummets. Gulls have spattered their dreck on the hood of my foul weather gear. The deck boss has poured me my coffee. The chief has lit a cigarette and leaned back and drawled gruffly. The rail man has offered me a seat in the doghouse. Green water has broken across deck, and we wait. God hath spoken. The whole ocean shivers, heaped in our rain gear until the storm abates. We sleep while the vessel booms and quivers. Thanks. Okay, raise your hand if you make a living by the pound. Now get them up, get them up, I know who you are. Okay, look around. This is the meaning of hard work. Life by the pound. Sitting in my wheelhouse trying to make my way through bills, sharpening my pencil, just wondering how it feels to always have some cash on hand, to have it laying around instead of hoping for adjustments to the cannery's price per pound. Some days I get the average, others not so well. I usually think I'm doing fine, but delivery line will tell. I should have made adjustments or a change in my position in order to accomplish a salmon increase acquisition. <laughs> Meanwhile, the fuel tabs mounting up, the harbor wants a share, insurance is relentless, and licensing is fair. As fast as I can catch a fish, its value has been eaten, City, county, state, and feds just keep on a feeding. I know there's lots of overhead and bureaucracy can be taxing. Arthritic hands and lower back while government's relaxing. I don't see paid holidays or retirement accounts. My checkbook's getting skinnier with dwindling accounts. I understand the cards I drew. My position in this game is to feed the people and not to seek out fame. For me, it will be net in line and the rolling of the dice. I won't be cashing in today with an iPhone or device. <laughs> Remember what my dad would say? Quit whining and you're wishing. Get your young ass out of bed. Get out there and get fishing. <laughs> you don't have to look too far to see how good you got it. I count my lucky stars each day because that's the way he taught it. Now here I'm looking outside at sights that won't be seen from an office cubicle or a desktop screen. I can smell the ocean, I can hear the sound, I can feel the blessings of this life that's by the pound.